Yeah, Rapid7 is a cybersecurity company um, that really began with a mission to bring security to the masses. You know, the, the traditionally cybersecurity companies catered to the most sophisticated end users. And what we realized is that, you know, cybersecurity was something that everyone needed to be, you know, be able to achieve. And so we've really spent a lot of our time trying to understand how um, attackers break into the companies we're trying to protect and build security solutions that, that they can use and that are easy to use and um, that are operational. And so, you know, ultimately, when you come to work here at Rapid7, you're, you're democratizing cybersecurity. So, you know, we have, we have a really large engineering team, but we have a lot of different products here. And so what we really strive to, to build here is, you know, discrete and autonomous engineering teams, you know, teams that, um, you know, are around 20 to 30 engineers strong, um, autonomously working on, you know, their part of the product or even sometimes, you know, the, the whole product. And ultimately, you know, we really want to keep that spirit of innovation that got us where we are today. And so small, innovative you know, highly motivated engineering teams is, is what we strive to build. You know, one of the great things about, about coming to Rapid7 is, you know, almost every, every project here is really interesting because you are trying to protect um, your, our customers from active adversaries. So if you think about what makes cybersecurity as a space incredibly unique is that there are, you know, bands of criminals, um, you know, nation states, um, hackers that are trying to break into your customers' environments, active adversaries that you have to react to, understand, and constantly keep abreast of what they're doing. And it probably makes cybersecurity the most unique, one of the most unique industries to work in, because every project we work on here is, a, is in reaction or trying to be proactively getting ahead of, of these active attackers and, and what they're doing. And so, you know, it, it's, it's, there's just never a dull day here at Rapid7 because the threat landscape, um, what attackers are doing, how they're trying to break into our customers is just constantly evolving. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're really excited um, about the breadth of offerings and the breadth of ways we help our customers protect themselves against these attackers. But with that breadth comes really just, you know, an immense amount of um, interesting problems to solve. We have a, a, a modern microservice tech stack. Um, you know, we use a lot of the traditional tools um, that people use to build microservices. We're an Amazon web services shop, so AWS, you know, through and through. Um, we do have some services running in GCP and, and a very small Azure presence, but ultimately we've standardized on, on AWS, which means if you come to Rapid7, you get to take advantage of all those, you know, really, you know, rich AWS services. A lot of companies that are striving to be multi-cloud and, you know, have their stack run in, in all three of the, the big cloud providers don't get to take advantage of some of those core Amazon services because they are, you know, might not be available over in, um, in GCP. So, you know, we really try to take advantage of all the power of AWS. So we leave our developers to solve the really hard problems. And ultimately, you know, beyond just the cybersecurity issues, um, you know, we are uh, all about scale. You know, last year, um, one of our product lines processed 92 trillion events uh, um, for, across all of our customers. And, you know, scale is, is really important. So we used, you know, Java, microservices, um, and, you know, all sorts of um, backend services that allow us to scale, whether it's Cassandra, Redis, um, AWS Athena, it ultimately, because we're a microservice shop, if you believe there's a, a tool or solution out there that will help us achieve the scale we need and then and solve the problem we need to solve, you've got the in, independence to, to choose that particular you know, solution and, and run with it. And that's really what we strive is, is for each of our, our development teams to solve the problems in front of them using the technology they need to solve those problems. So, you know, I think first and foremost, we, we strive to maintain a really strong team culture. And so ultimately what we're trying to figure out is, you know, are you going to fit into our team culturally? And, and are you going to be, um, you know, are you going to be happy here? Are, are we going to be happy? Is the, is the team all going to, you know, going to get along? And, and so that, you know, first and foremost is, is the most important thing. 
Then I would say, you know, we're really looking for people with high aptitude. So you don't have to have used our tech stack in the past. You don't have to be a cybersecurity expert. We just want curious people who love to learn. And if, if, you, if you really fit those two characteristics, right? Low ego, love to work on a team and love to learn, you're gonna do great at Rapid7. What I would say is it's always a great time to join Rapid7. I think as a company, we value our culture and our team. You know, we're a company that's growing rapidly and we're, you know, constantly solving new and exciting problems. And so it doesn't matter if you're ready to join Rapid7 today or you're ready to join us in, in six months or a year. It's always going to be true. You know, we, we really believe in our culture, protecting our culture and hiring people who are going to be great in our culture. And, you know, we have no shortage of incredibly hard problems to solve. So, you know, it's always a good join, time to join Rapid7 is what I would say.